This episode of Uraga Garifuna is sponsored by Supplies Plus Distributors Limited, located in Belize City. <laughs> On this episode of Uraga Garifuna, we'll take you to Sabal's Cassava Farm in the heart of the culture capital Dan Griga, home to the largest concentration of Garinago in Belize. The cassava, which is a root crop, makes up an essential part of the Garifuna staple. It yields many products such as cassava bread, porridge, starch, and much more. Let us join Cyril Sabal the owner and proprietor of Sabal's food processing factory, as he walks us through key learnings of cassava production. At the cassava production farm, two varieties of cassava root are grown. They are locally known as sweet cassava and bitter cassava. The sweet cassava can be eaten as a vegetable and can be used to make cassava flour. The bitter cassava is the variety that is used to make cassava bread, yielding up to 20 to 30,000 pounds per acre, and it is somewhat pest resistant. Last year when we started, we planted about June, and then the extended dry come in, and the whole thing, like 2% germination. We have it in again, we plant it again, then the flood come, and erode everything again. So just this there now, we replant it, and so far so good. As I may say earlier, this time this is a sweet cassava field, specifically Panama variety and sweet sweet cassava. They have different variety, but we choose this one here because this is the one we give away the quality where we want and the, the production. In a in a Panama, we could get up to 20 to 30,000 pounds per acre, while other varieties probably maybe could be nicer, different quality, but you know, give you the, the quantity. And while you while we probably make flower or birds, we look for the amount, the quantity. While you have a lot of water, but then it's still manageable. This time one could be eaten from the table as a vegetable and stuff make flour out of it, while the bitter one it, it give you the same production or more but the animals they don't harass it as much as the sweet one and then the bitter one give you a better quality than this sweet one here because it, it, it have less sugar so it brown probably more power, balanced level for the, the kumal while baking. At Sabal's the process of cassava farming includes bulldozing of field while ensuring that the topsoil is not removed. This is followed by plowing, harrowing, and ridging. Ridging refers to raising the soil beds to allow for less water penetration. This helps to increase yield. After ridging, the field is planted. This field as we they look on it, our another old citrus orchard, it may be overgrown and get out of hand, but I bring it, try, um, I just push a small bulldozer to walk over it, because I don't want to bulldoze and lose my topsoil. So I, I just make it walk over it, now I clean it out manually, then we plow, harrow and do the works. Like I said, citrus that the thing was the thing. Everything they try, divert for citrus, cassava, new industry, new life. The harvesting now, uh, we, we prefer to do it early morning, so that by the time the sun comes out, we actually out of the fields. I mean, for we are not necessarily an employment thing, now. it's a for family structure. Like me, my son, my cousin, and friends and neighbors, and we just, we, we just for we own employment where 
we do and live off of the, because our tuber. So we, we prefer wake up early in the morning with the tractor, we cut the sticks there, and then we cut them off of the stem, carry in at the shed where the ladies that we mostly do the peeling when we reach in the shed. Normally, uh, like like 1,000 to 1,500 pounds. Generally, for the new fields, <coughs> we try, if we do bushagging and bulldozing for our, at our, our primary field, our primary land clearing, we try ask the operator not to remove topsoil, almost not to remove topsoil. So, by the end of the day, if they don't remove topsoil, then we will have to remove the one-one sticks manually. Then we do a plowing, the harrowing, and the ridging. Ridging and making the same beds, uplift the beds so that the cassava are way up and then you have less losses when you when come to water. But that not eliminate the drainage. You still have to do drainage. So that the tractor do all the work. Plowing, harrowing, ridging, and we even use it for spot and plant. We cut sticks, normally stick. The sticks we cut by trailer loader or so and spot and plant, spot off of the tractor and do the manual planting. Just they, they carry sticks down there on the ground, just go and strike to the end. At the processing plant, the cassava root is received, peeled, washed, grated, dried, and baked. Traditional processes are still being used to peel, wash, and bake, while the grating and drying are done using mechanical technology. You do the thrown on the ground, and the ladies usually, not, not necessarily, but usually, are able to peel them, and then the peeling will take <coughs> each person probably could do 120 pounds in a two hours in a peeling. Some people feel free, they look risky, they look, but <coughs> this is not probably the one of the last process we're not really mechanized yet. Yeah, but I've seen um, peeling were mechanized. And the peeling slow. But you don't have no wastage right now. But they have the mechanized peeling where um, I don't want to say wastage, but you have more more byproduct because they, with all you peel it, the, the skin still no waste. That will go to animal feed, pig, sheep, whatever. So, but when you peel with machine, then because of the various size in a in a tuber, then you have more animal feed than tuba. So for peeling, you go to the washing. One then you use coin brush and productive you just this away. Once you have enough in the water, and you shuffle it back and forth and the, the movements are making you wash yourself. You just have to shuffle it back and forth. But faster and easier. Traditionally as well, the grated material is placed in a wola, known as ruguma in Garifuna. The ruguma is stuffed with grated cassava, hung on a beam of the roof to allow fluids to drain to a good level of moisture. Using the mechanical technology, after grating, the grated paste is placed in a pan and compact with a hydraulic jack. This is more efficient. In comparison to using the ruguma to drain the fluid, which takes half hour to drain 40 pounds of grated cassava, the mechanized process drains 200 pounds in only half hour. In terms of the traditional versus the mechanized processes, the traditional way of grating cassava root is to use a large wooden grater called Egi in Garifuna. 
at Sabal's cassava factory, grating is done using a mechanized process where the peeled cassava root is placed in a stainless steel container and grated mechanically. 1,000 pounds can be grated in 20 minutes using this process. Well, the Rugoma would have taken like <coughs> half an hour, two person, that already dry like 40 pounds in another half an hour, two or three people. This, this system here, well, we have to come up with our own system. This system here, they do 200 pounds in the same half an hour with only one person. This is a manual way of saving. Traditional manual, again, the same as 50 times. Probably never go and see, see birds, so, so you have to make your own. So you block up the dry material and rub it up on the surface and the fine material drop the bottom. The, the coarse material will stay at top. The way you will so heal, where they make the juice out of. Potato or ginger and flavor. And the fine material are replaced by comal. Again, the scarcity and the quality material and the technology for make it, we had to come up with something. So we have we created this machine again where great for the top and vibrate the button. We give you the silver and the fine material, drop the button. Ready for throw for the comal and bake to the river. The fine sieved material is then spread on a hot kamal and baked. The result is a completely baked cassava bread. Each cassava bread, known as ereba in Garifuna, takes approximately five to six minutes to completely bake. A cassava bread that is properly baked can last up to six years without spoilage. <laughs> After baking, dry, cure, well, a cassava bread package could last from could last up to six years proven. I guess longer than that, up to six, seven years that will prove already. You not change taste, you know nothing. Give me my 
Some tools used in cassava bread baking include the gararu, which in English is the flipper. This tool is made of wood and used to stir the fine grated cassava known as sibiba in Garifuna. The gararu is also used to put the grated cassava onto the hot kamal for baking. Another tool is the besewa, a broom-like brush that is used to sweep excess grated material of the kamal when baking. There is also the adgale, which is a wooden tool used to compact the sibiba onto the kamal when baking the cassava bread. I'll save by hibise. Um, you're using it. You're, finally, you're, you'll get the refined one for just dress off all the pores and the pieces. Okay, the, the, the packaging as we are all manual, but we try upgrade. You know, um, if you say we're whole ever, we whole ever, no, we don't have a standard size because we do it manual, so there's no real true gauge to that. So we still come back to the scale for say, um, measure how much ever in our package. So, so we do it with a one pound package. We stick to a one pound package. So some people might say, but this looks clean or this looks whatsoever. But our pong, or else you say this is a big area, a small area, a thick area, a thin one. So we standardize our pong, then it is universal. So they are a one pong package sold by the market for five dollars. This episode of Uraga Garifuna was sponsored by Supplies Plus Distributor Limited, located in Belize City, and brought to you by the Battle of the Drum Secretariat. On the next Uraga Garifuna, we'll be featuring a prominent Garifuna entrepreneur, Garifuna cultural activist, writer, and advocate for the Garifuna culture, Jose Francisco Avila. Cassava. Ripa, ripa cassava. <laughs>